Hey everyone, welcome back to Mason Zero MTG. Recently I was asked to revisit my Trivial Tribal series. I made an episode on Archer Tribal because there weren't any Archer Commanders at the time. Well now, there is one, Ohabi Kalaria. This green-white legendary creature has reach, of course, because they're an Archer, but they also untap all Archers you control during each other player's untap step. And then finally, when an Archer you control deals damage to a creature, you may pay 2 mana and draw a card. These abilities work great with the existing archer cards, and they could make a fun commander deck. In the last video we used Samet as our commander, so using Ohabi will remove red from the equation. But that's okay though, since really most of the archers are in green-white, there weren't a lot of good ones in red. Samet was pretty good as a commander to be totally honest, but Ohabi is obviously much more specific to what archers do. I'd be curious to see which you think is the better commander, because I could see it both ways. The first card in our deck, of course, has to be Great Bow Doyen. This 5 mana Archer Lord, the only Archer Lord, has an ability that synergizes well with Ohabi, turning any damage that an Archer deals to a creature into damage that is dealt to the player, also. Since our commander wants our creatures to be dealing damage to creatures, this is perfect. Another key card that synergizes perfectly is Halana Kessig Ranger. This creature says that whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay 2 mana, and it deals damage equal to its power to target creature. This is the perfect card for our theme, giving plenty of extra creature-based damage to our archers. Now we need a bunch of archers that specifically deal damage to creatures, and luckily, most of them do, and they do so by tapping, and our commander conveniently untaps all of our archers on each untap step. Bridged Hero of Kinsbale can tap to deal 2 damage to each attacking or blocking creature a player controls. This can help keep a potential attack at bay, or greatly sway a block. Even an attacker block between two opponents, they don't have to be attacking you. Being able to potentially untap each turn can really let you play politics with this deck, and do this on everyone's combat step. Most of our normal archers tap to activate their abilities. Some of these include Scattershot Archer, Crossbow Infantry, Femorif Archers, and Elite Archers, so we're going to want some additional cards that help with these tap abilities. Drum Bellower untaps our creatures during each untap step, so it's a nice backup for our commander. Serith the Viper's Fang is a good card in pretty much any large creature based deck, but it can power up our creatures especially. All of our tapped creatures will have Death Touch, so they can instantly destroy any creature when they tap to deal damage to them and when they're untapped, they're protected with Hexproof. Thousand Year Elixir lets our archers tap right away, which overcomes one of their biggest weaknesses, which is that they can't tap until it comes around to your next turn, leaving them vulnerable to removal. If you want to go all out, you could run Concordant Crossroads instead, but of course that's going to be a symmetrical effect that might end up hurting you. Since Ohabi likes when archers deal damage to creatures, focusing on green's fight spells for removal is going to be really useful. Bite Down is a simple one-sided single target removal spell, Dromoka's Command is a flexible fight spell, and Clear Shot is both reasonably good and thematic. These are just a few examples of fight spells, but there's plenty more if you'd like to focus on that even more. But you can also run more traditional green and white removal like Swords to Plowshares and Beast Within. There is an increasingly large suite of tribal cards that are good to run, and we can run better ones than when I made the previous Trivial Tribal video. We have some generic ones like Metallic Mimic and Bloodline Pretender, as well as green-white specific cards like Mirror Entity and Realm Walker. I think these are some of the best tribal specific cards to run, but of course there are plenty of other ones that you can choose from. Most archers are focused on creature removal, but luckily there is at least one that deals with non-creatures. In fact, there's two. Sawblade Slinger can destroy an artifact, so that's at least something. Masked Vandal is a sneaky one since it has Changeling, and is technically an archer even though it's not printed on the card, but it can exile an artifact or an enchantment. But this deficiency is also a good reason to run the aforementioned Dromoka's command, as well as aura shards for repeatable artifact and enchantment removal every time we play a creature. We don't have a ton of artifacts and enchantments worth running as compared to creatures, so the most ideal board wipe is likely austere command. And you can generally make austere command one-sided for creatures, because most archers are 3 mana or below, meaning you can choose to blow up only bigger creatures and be pretty happy about that. The amount of board wipes is going to be up to you, but ultimately it's a little bit difficult to judge since our archers are built in creature removal. 
And in fact, giving a card like Bridged Hero of Kinsmale, Death Touch, can basically be a board wipe on its own. In green-white, there are plenty of utility and protection cards to play. I think some of the obvious ones are Sun Titan, Lanoir Elves, Elodimery's Call to grab our Great Bow Doyen or another great card, Heroic Intervention, Teferi's Protection, Ghostly Prison, and Mirari's Wake, just to name some of my own personal favorites. Now, I wouldn't recommend going out of your way to play the original Lady Calaria that our commander is based on, due to her price from being printed only ever in Legends. But if you do have one in your collection, this 7 mana 3-6 can tap to deal 3 damage to an attacking or blocking creature, and it will also be incredibly thematic in the deck. But again, not a great card, Ooh, don't spend money on it. There are a few other creatures worth noting. I feel like we need a non-archer win condition that is actually, you know, good. So I picked Champion of Lambholt. It's not an archer, but I do think it's a reasonable win condition for a creature heavy deck like ours, and doesn't rely on other creatures attacking, which is good because our archers probably won't be attacking that much. Stalking Leonin is an archer that can just exile a creature. Beast Whisperer will help us keep our hand full. Nylea Keen-Eyed is thematic since she is depicted as an archer, but she also reduces the cost of our creatures and is an indestructible threat. Otherwise, you can round out the deck with any archers you see fit. There are a lot of similar ones out there and a lot of them are pretty unexciting. It's really the synergy with the commander that makes them actually good, so you can kind of fill out the deck with whatever you want. In terms of artifacts, there's going to be the usual mana artifacts, but a few thematic tools as well. Basilisk Collar is probably one of the best cards in the deck. It grants lifelink and death touch, so that'll buff up any of their tapping archers that we attach it to, turning it into a machine gun. Viridian Longbow is mostly for the theme, but it can grant any of our creatures a tap to damage ability if they don't already have one. And then for additional ramp, you can run Kodama's Reach and Cultivate, of course, because we're in green. I'm not going to go into lands in this video, as you can run any combination of green and white lands that you feel like or that your budget affords. There's really no specific lands that are great in this deck. The only exception is some of the tribal lands that you'd be running in pretty much any tribal deck. So Cavern of Souls, if you can afford it, Secluded Courtyard, Path of Ancestry, all of those will be pretty good here. But since we're in two colors, we don't have to worry too much about fixing. This is going to be a pretty easy mana base if you want it to be. So that's a quick look at Archer Tribal. Now that there's actually a commander for it and a pretty good commander. And it's only three mana with lots of relevant abilities. I'll go ahead and link my deck list in the description. And if you're interested in building a similar deck, you can use this as a basis if you'd like. There are a few ways you could build the deck actually. And I picked a little bit more of a generic build. You could easily make a plus one plus one counter sub theme as well by filling out some of your random archers with ones that care about counters, and then some other counter synergy cards, cards that draw off of counters, things like that. I also think that Samet is still a pretty solid commander for an archer's deck that synergizes pretty well with all of the things that our archers do. If you're looking to keep red in the mix, I don't think it would be a mistake to have her as the commander and put Ohabi in the 99. But with that, please let me know what you think in the comments. Is this a deck you'd build? Is it too silly? Do you think you can make it good? Let me know in the comments and I will see you in the next Mason Zero MTG video.